Did you know that between 400 and 500 community service hours is suggested in high school? Colleges are looking for two things that separate students. One is commitment and the other is leadership. Hello, Action Taker. Welcome to Live Blissed Out, a podcast where I have inspirational and informational conversations with business owners and subject matter experts to help you get the scoop on a variety of topics. Tired of hesitating or making decisions without having the big picture? Want to be in the know? Then this is the place to go. I'm your host, Marissa Houston, helping you achieve bliss through awareness and action. So let's get to it. In this episode, Joe Eberly shares how to take the stress out of your college planning. Joe is owner of The College Store. He helps students and their families navigate through the challenges of finding and arranging college financing. He's an expert in helping students and parents pick just the right school, as well as finding the funding necessary to turn college dreams into reality. He has a keen ability to discern what students are looking for and help them find just the right school to help them achieve their goals. Joe's hands-on experience gives him a clear edge in the art of navigating the convoluted financial aid process. That edge translates into a proven track record that not only makes certain that families receive the greatest amount of aid possible, but more importantly, that they receive the right type of aid. It is this experience and expertise, plus a personal commitment to every student, that makes Joe a valuable member of each family's college team. To learn more, visit thecollegestore.net. The information, opinions, and recommendations presented in this podcast are for general information only, and any reliance on the information provided in this podcast is done at your own risk. This podcast should not be considered professional advice. Joe, thank you for being here. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I am looking forward to this conversation, and I'm excited to learn from you. What are we talking about today? I have been doing college advising for the past 31 years. I'm going to talk about what people need to know as far as when they're students in high school, how they're going to find the perfect school, and also how to find a school that the family can afford. It's very overwhelming for people, and it's overwhelming for the kids as well as the parents, because let's face it, a lot of kids that are going to college, they're 18 years old, and they're expected to make really big decisions, life decisions that could impact the way they address their life in the future, essentially. A lot of times people just grab the first opportunity or just take something because they want to have a degree without really giving it enough thought and really understanding what the choices are that are available to them. What are some perhaps challenges that people struggle with and how can you help them? Let's talk about probably the number one problem I see with families doing college planning is they don't have a plan. When you have a high school student and you say, I'm going to get you a car. They tell the student, we're going to get you a car, and they tell them, you know, we can afford this much money, or this is our budget, or this monthly payment. But when it comes to college, they do the exact opposite. You find a college, and then we'll figure out if we can pay for it or not, which is kind of strange because if a student looks at a school and it costs $70,000 a year, and then they do all the work, and then they find out they can't go there, and their parents say, well, we can't afford that, there should be an easy conversation right before the start of the process that says, okay, what's our budget? Or what are our parameters? Or what are we willing to accept and what are we willing to expect? There's five key buttons to what a college looks for with students applying. The number one thing is grades, of course. Number two is they call rigor. And rigor would be AP classes, honors classes, et cetera. The third is ACT, SAT test. Fourth is community service. And fifth is leadership. What happens with most families is they don't try to fill those five boxes. That's why Typically, a family starts too late as far as looking at colleges. They literally should start in freshman or even sophomore year because they have to fill those five boxes. I run into many, many good families, and they're great as far as they get really good GPAs, and they're taking some good classes, but they're in sports, for example, or they're in something in school, something like theater, et cetera. And all these are great things, but they don't have time to do leadership and community service. And what happens is they get the senior year and they think, oh, I need to do community service. So I need to do leadership. And the college looks at that and says, that's great, but where the heck were you the last four years? You're just trying to fill up a box and that doesn't work. Number one thing that people keep telling me all the time is, my kid's going to go to college. We'll figure out how to pay for it. And that's not really a good strategy. I had a good friend call me the other day who said he doesn't need my help and he appreciates what I do, but he's got it all figured out. And he told me that his son is going to go either to Metro or Montana State University. Well, those are two really good schools, but the price difference is enormous. Plus, Metro is what they call a transit school, meaning students don't usually live on campus. They live at home. Go to Montana State. If you live in Colorado, that's obviously out of state. You're talking about a school that costs 20 thousand dollars and a school that costs 40. Here's the kicker. The family came back and said to me, now we got to find scholarships and grants. 
And I'm thinking, when I used to be an investment advisor, they come to me at age 64 and they say, I want to retire next year. I say, good. How's your retirement package look like? But we haven't really done a lot with it. We've done a little bit. And they, you say, well, what should I do? Well, I think you should work another 10 years. Or maybe you can put away $9,000 a month for the next five years. I told this guy that it's a little late, but I did give him a couple of resources on scholarships, a sites out there that I do believe in. One of the companies I like is a company called How to Win College Scholarships. It's run by a lady named Monica Matthews, and she's really legitimate, and she's really a good lady. She charges a fee for her service, but it's, it's under $100, and it'll tell you you everything you need to do. It basically says you got to do all these things. And there's no way you can do that in junior or senior year. It takes a lot more time. What you're saying, Joe, is that people aren't planning ahead. Do you think that the reason behind that is because they're thinking, well, my child has just started high school. I have to think about college already. We just started. And so they keep thinking, oh, I have several years. And then time goes by. All of a sudden, they're now seniors. And then that's when you start to really give it some weighted consideration. I think that's exactly right. When I use the analogy of planning for your future for retirement, everybody thinks they have plenty of time. They do a 401k at work and they put 3% away and you know that's all I have to do and that's not true. And what happens on college is it's overwhelming is the number one problem. People don't even know how to begin or how to start. The number one reason a student picks a college is because their friends are going there. That's a great idea if it's the right school. But if you're a kid in Colorado, which is where I live, and you say, oh, I'm just going to go to CSU, and that's what I want to do. And I'm saying, what do you want to study? Well, I don't know. Or I'm thinking about doing engineering, or I'm thinking about doing this. And it's like, this really isn't the right school for that particular subject. So what you need to do is find a subject that you think you like, something you love, actually. And then you find a school that specializes in that. The idea of getting a four-year college degree isn't the answer to being successful in life. There's a lot more than that. When I was growing up back East, my mother had a philosophy that you had to finish high school. That was our conversation. This is a long time ago. My philosophy now is you have to have four years of college just to be okay. And your master's degree, which is really going to scare people when they think about cost, you're going to figure out exactly what you want to do and then go from there. But the idea of looking at four years of college today is overwhelming, just that in itself. So you have to have a plan. And I have the plan. If I were to make an analogy, you are like a realtor for people looking to go to a college. It's much harder to buy a house on your own because there's just so many considerations you're not even aware of. And so you reach out to a realtor to help you make that happen. And you are that person for finding the right college. There's so many factors that a lot of us don't think about because we're just considering cost, for example, is usually something that people think about upfront, but not really connecting the dots. I agree 100%. And it's like if you're going to buy a house, for example, one of the questions is maybe neighborhood. One is location. But another one is, what's the budget? I'd love to live in Vail. I think Vail would be wonderful. But I don't have a million and a half to spend on a house. So I think that's what you do with college. And the main thing about college is that they're not all the same price, but there are certain schools that give more money than others, which I think is the key thing that most people don't know. And I'm going to use two of the Colorado schools as a good example. There's a school in Colorado Springs called Colorado College. It's a great school. It's one of the leading liberal arts schools in the country. It's approximately $70,000 a year. You have another great school called University of Denver, which is about the same price. But the Colorado College, for example, does not give merit scholarships. That means if your kid is a 4.0 and has a 36 ACT, that's wonderful. They're going to get in, but you're going to pay $70,000. That same student applies to Denver University and they say, okay, you're going to get in too. But now because your grades are so good, we're going to give you $40,000 of scholarship money each year. So now you're getting a great education at $35,000 a year. And people just don't realize that. So you got to find a school that's willing to pay you to go to that school, which I think is one of the things that people love about what I do. I find the money for them to go to school. And it's not from outside scholarships, which I also do, but it's also finding schools that give money, which is the key. To your point about finding a school that is a right fit in terms of offering programs or degrees that are in line with what they want, is that something you help with as well? I actually do three separate assessments. One of the assessments is called Berkman Assessments. And from my generation, there used to be Myers-Briggs. And Berkman is one that started out in the 70s. It hones down what a student's strengths are and what their personality is like and where they'll fit in. So if a student says, for example, they're extroverted and they have a very good, strong persuasive and they like to influence people, there's a certain type of school that'll apply to. But if they're very quiet and introverted, extremely smart, but they want to just be left alone and do their job, maybe something like an engineering degree, and I'm typecasting, but an engineering degree might be more their style. I've helped so many students over the last 31 years that finding the right mix is key, but I also have to find a school that the family can afford. That's important. Do you feel like families are mostly in agreement in terms of what they know they want for themselves? Or do you find that it's a, an eye-opening experience when they have a conversation with you? 
I think it's the second. It's definitely an eye-opening situation. I've done 99% of my business over the years through referrals. People will refer me to somebody and they say, well, I think we got it on our control. I said, okay, fine. Why don't we talk about what you have in place and I'll give you a free consultation. And we talk and then I say, what about standardized testing? They go, well, we don't really know much about that. Well, that may be the one thing I do help the family with because they know they want to go to a school that their parents went to. And that's the school they really are very comfortable with. But the ACT and SAT are things that I do. And then I also need to tell families, probably one of the misconceptions out there is families think that the school counselor will be able to help them find a college. And I really love school counselors. I was a motivational speaker in high schools for 10 years. And I love that generation. But if a counselor has 400 students and Joe Eberly has 20, honing in for 20 has got to be a lot better. Secondly, what happens with families is counselors don't take into account budget. So they do this assessment and they say, okay, it looks like you want to be an engineer. You want to go to this school. Cowboy School of Mines is great, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. In the, going through the process, they don't think about the cost. Maybe the family can't afford $35,000 a year. Well, that's where I come in. I say, I can find you a great education, just what you're looking for, but maybe we can get that school for $25,000. That, that's a big factor. What you offer is more personalized. You can help a smaller group of people and get to know them and really help them early on. The other thing is you also offer a more well-rounded approach where you're not just addressing, oh, what do you want to take, but you go a lot deeper. That's true. It's funny. One of my families not too long ago said to me, you know, I really like what you offer, but it's so comprehensive. And I'm thinking, is that a bad thing? I know it's because they're overwhelmed. It's like me trying to buy my first house. I had no clue what I was doing. But the reality is when it comes to finding a right college, it's paramount that you have somebody give you advice. And I offer free advice all the time to people with the idea that maybe they don't need me. Maybe they're okay. But maybe they can refer me to another family that maybe does need me. That's how I kept my business going for 31 years. And I got to tell you, COVID has really changed the landscape. You hear everything from they're not doing ACT, SAT tests in colleges anymore. But now we're getting back to the real world where it seems like we're getting more uh, stable. And so all the things are changing. And colleges are really, really hungry for students, which is probably something parents don't know. Because in the old days, four or five years ago, these admissions people were out at college fairs, at visiting schools, doing all these things. And they're not doing that anymore. So now it's a question of you getting in front of them instead of them getting in front of you. And that's where you got to be proactive. And that's how I help the students and families do that. All of us have life-changing moments. And I believe one of the biggest life-changing moments is that moment where you decide at a very young age what you want to do with yourself. Because high school, once it's over, a lot of people decide, okay, I don't want to go to college, but a lot of them say, yes, I do. And it's an important decision Just like when you decide where you're going to live or who you're going to marry or what job you're going to take, these things are really important to mold us as individuals. And if we're not doing it to the best of our ability, it could change the trajectory of where you think you are going, either positively or negatively impact you. It's one of those things that we really need to put a lot of thought into. I think that's the key. You actually have to put a lot of thought into it. And what I do in my business is I put together an outline plan. And one of the things I like to offer people is if they contact me, I will give them the top 10 steps they need to do right now. And it's not something that I have to be involved in, but it gives them a place to start to think about the process. And I do that all the time. Joe, what does this look like in terms of a timeline when they reach out to you? And let's say that they decide, yes, Joe, I need your help working all this out. How long is this process? Could you give us an idea of how that works? In the past, people would usually contact me at September, October, the junior year. And the trigger usually is they know college is right around the corner, but more importantly, they have standardized testing and they know they have to deal with that. So they contact me. But if I can deal with a student that's a sophomore, which is what I would call my ideal timeline, I can talk to that student without any pressure whatsoever about what they really want to study, what they have in mind. And if they have some areas that need fine tuning, if you would, a good example is if they're not a good writer, I have tutors that'll help them with learning writing skills. I have a tutor that helps them with reading. I have a tutor that helps them with math. All those things are put in place so that there's no pressure. Or if you come to me and it's the end of junior year, which happens, it's like, you know, well, my son doesn't really like to write or my daughter doesn't really like to read or my daughter has a really hard time with math and my son has a hard time with math. I can fix all those things in sophomore year so that it's really a piece of cake. And why put a student through all that stress at the last minute? Because the family's going to be enough stress figuring out how to pay for it. Let's get all this other stuff done ahead of time. When you start with them in their sophomore year, does that mean then that you are going to be with them all the way through the graduation, or is it an ongoing process? That's a great question. This will probably surprise people. I work with them all through high school, plus I'm on retainer while they're in college. I have two students in the family that I'm working with. One is a sophomore at CU, and another one is a senior at Thunder Ridge. 
And the student in college at CU called me up and said, would you mind visiting with me? I'm having a hard time trying to figure out really what I want to study. I know it's going to be engineering, but I'm having a real hard time with physics. And I don't know if that's the way I want to go. And the mom calls me up and says, do you mind meeting with them? And I said, of course not. So I go up and have lunch with them. And I've talked to them four times this year to try to figure out what he might want to study specifically that really fit his comfort level. One of the problems he had was he was taking way too many college credits and taking everything in that first year and beginning of sophomore year that he's overwhelmed. I sat down with him, I talked to him, and the mom loves me and I love the family because now they know that not only did I help them in high school, but I also help them while they're in college too. I don't always do a lot of interacting with the kids when they're in college, but when they need me, I'm there. It's nice for the family to know that if you have any memories of yourself back in college, for example, you just dealt with stuff. You didn't even know what to expect. You just went to classes and tried to do the best you can, didn't really know who to talk to. And so The entire family knowing that they have somebody to turn to is so comforting. If somebody is listening to us right now and they're saying, I need Joe, what do they need to do? Could you share exactly how they can get a hold of you and learn more about what you offer? I'll suggest they email me at joe at thecollegestore.net or they're welcome to call me at 720-841-0809. They can also check out my website, which has been up, and there's lots of things on there that might be able to help them right away. And when they call me or email me, I'll send them the top 10 things they need to do as far as planning for college, and that's free. And then after they see that, if they would like to have a free consultation, uh, we'll do a Zoom meeting or a telephone call, whatever's easy. Usually people will get a 15-minute phone call with me to find out if indeed there's a fit for either one of us. Respectfully, I'm just as selective as they are. I know where I'm a good fit. I know where I'm not. So at that 15 minutes, I can say, I think this is something I can help you with. Why don't we set up a meeting with the dad, mom, and student? We'll do a Zoom meeting based on today's society. And at that meeting, we'll see if we can make a fit. I'll quote you a price. I'll then let you go back and talk about it. And if it makes sense, we get together for a second interview. After meeting, you can both decide whether or not it's the right partnership. Because that's really what it is. It's a collaborative partnership. I agree 100%. And I'm not a fit for everybody. I mean, I'll give you a good example. If a family comes to me and says, we don't think college is that important, but we want to figure out if we should do it or not do it, and we talk, and at the end of the meeting, I find out they're not ready to go to college, then they have my number for the future. For example, of going to community college, which I went to for two years, it's okay, and then maybe they just need more time. Not everybody is ready at the same time. That's why the consultations are so important, because it's really just trying to figure out what they are thinking about versus what you offer and making sure that you can help, because otherwise it would be a waste of time for everyone. Thank you so much for being here, Joe. I appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity, and I wish everybody out there the best of luck. That's a wrap for this episode of Live Blissed Out. Thanks to Joe Eberly for joining us, and thanks for listening. If you have a question or comment for a future episode, all you have to do is go to speakpipe.com forward slash L-B-O-V-M or click the link in the show notes to leave a brief audio message. If you find value in our show, please visit liveblissedout.com to reach out, subscribe, and share on social media. This show is made possible through listeners like you. Thank you. So long for now, and remember to keep moving forward.